we hear Jesus tell his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem when he will suffer and be killed, and that whoever comes after him must take up his cross and follow him, it must have been quite a shock. This is the first time Jesus told them this. We know what happened nearly 2,000 years ago, but the challenge is new for each generation of disciples. Are we willing to take up our crosses? Will we follow? Let our sharing in this Eucharist strengthen us as we take up the cross and follow him. Please rise to greet our celebrant, Mother Tobe, and join in singing our opening hymn number 703 in your breaking bread, Lift High the Cross, number 703.
God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. You duped me, O Lord, and I let myself be duped. You were too strong for me, and you triumphed. All the day I am an object of laughter, Everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I must cry out. Violence and outrage is my message. The word of the Lord has brought me derision and reproach all the day. I say to myself, I will not mention him. I will speak in his name no more. But then it becomes like a fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. I grow weary holding it in. I cannot endure it. The word of the Lord. St. Paul to the Romans. I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, 
that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. The word of the Lord. Look, 
You know, if you had presented me with a job description and handed me a pen, then I would have read the job description and I would have dropped the pen and I would have run out of the room. Uh, yet, and yet, too late for that, and yet, try as I may, as Oliver Wendell Holmes said, oh, the brain learns when the brain expands. It can't go back to its original dimensions. Much as I would like to, much as I would like to, I can't. And when I try to go along and get along, when I try to just go along and get along and to fit in with the crowd, it's like this volcanic force wells up in my bones. In the marrow of my bones. So, what's going on here? What's going on here? Well, now, most of you don't remember the day of your baptism, but you can remember other baptisms that you've gone to. And you'll notice the priest, you know, he consecrates the top of the baby's head in those cases. Priest, prophet, and king. Priest, prophet, and king. So you get further into the mystery. It's not something you do. It's something you are. This, when you surrender, motherhood is not something you do. It's something you are. When you surrender, when you surrender and cross into it, after all of the protestation, after Kubler-Ross's five stages of death and dying, let's say two with bargaining denial and their acceptance, I mean, uh, that's four, right? yeah, but acceptance, when you get to acceptance, this is how I'm gonna work out my salvation, fear and trembling. If everybody knew what they were doing, nobody would do anything. Nobody would start, nobody would embark on any journey. They would start a business or a family. They knew in advance. They knew in advance what was going to happen. Right? Say, it's just this feeling of approaching a corner. This is what it is. Pick up your belongings and trundle off into the unknown, knowing that the Almighty will accompany you. Some people will be called to perform very traumatic. Very, very dramatic. Uh, have a very dramatic role to play. Some people not so much. Who knows? Right? There by the grace of God go I. There by the grace of God go I. But you know, as the church in the 16 documents of the Second Vatican Council, if you go to Lumen Gentium, number eight, talk about the church humbly, patiently going through the tribulations of the world and the consolations of God, faithfully, humbly, patiently, proclaiming the passion, death, and the resurrection of the Messiah, who is the resolution of the human condition and the bridge between time and eternity, the Logos, the Word became flesh, right? Remember the preface to the Gospel of St. John? He is the light of the world. And so he accompanies us through life, which is often a dark valley. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm waiting for the results of a biopsy. I don't know what, what, I don't know. Even if they could hand me the results, I wouldn't know how to read them. The doctor has to tell me what I'm looking at. I don't know what I'm looking at. But I have to go through what I have to go through. And it's, I can't always. Can't always tell it yet. He accompanies me. He accompanies me. He accompanies us. We walk as a people, right? We walk as a people. And then in the gospel today, in case you thought, now it's easy. The dominant paradigms in America, right, are politics, business, and sports, right? You know, mostly Americans, they talk about the weather, but they think about money. Right? We talk about politics, business, or sports. Kind of what it really is. You know, and it, all of those are binary, reductive. They're binary and they're reductive. And, uh, and, 
ahistorical, you know. And uh, this is the dominant paradigm. And so, you know, people in and around Jesus or people in and around the church, they say, you know, well, this is like a campaign and we're going to pick up steam and then we're going to go and we're going to take the capital by storm and where are you going to? Oh, no, we're going to change things. We're going to change things, right? That's not what this is. That's not what this is. That's not what this is. But that's what Peter thought it was. What does Jesus say to Peter? Right? Jesus tells the, the apostles, I gotta go to Jerusalem. And this everything as you know, this whole interesting ride that you've been on, that you've been jockeying for a position, and all of this, trying to get access, trying to uh, you know, you imagine if they had selfies back then, right? Trying to get myself in the same frame as this Jesus. This could really pay off for us, honey. Oh, boy, this guy looks like he's gonna be big. He could be on the ground floor or something. And yet, they're all yet down to explain that he is in fact the unblemished lamb, the lamb of God, who will go, right? That he will become simultaneously the high priest, the altar, and the Lamb of God. Right? That he will be the bridge between time and eternity. He will vanquish the power of death by arising from the dead, and he will send his blood for the forgiveness of sins. It's on a level of there's something existential. These men that surrounded him, the men and women, you know, all in all surrounding him, they were dealing with secondary causality. Dealing with things of a secondary nature, temporal security and status. Right? So get behind me, that's not what this is. Get behind me, that's not what this is. But this is better than that. This is better than that. This is better than that. So once, once you find this pearl of great price, you know, I can't. I can't give it up. You know, you listen to Paul. You know, after Paul experiences the risen Christ, in his second letter to the early Christian community in Corinth, he describes what he has, what he goes through. How he was chased by wild animals. He was in a shipwreck. He was tied to the pillar. He was tied to the post. I mean, he's really collecting like his people can do, right? This is what happened to me. This is what happened to me. They tied me to the pillar. They tied me to the post. They beat me up. They threw me out of every good place, every synagogue. I fell out of a window. They left me for dead. And all of this. You say, wow, maybe it would have been better if you never met Jesus. I mean, you had a nice job, you know. You were at uh, tenure. You were a person at the very highest level of society, enjoying security and status and all of this. And then you had an encounter with the risen Lord, and then you end up, you end up getting your teeth knocked out, right? You end up coughing up blood. What? This is good. And and you hear Paul says, and this is, this is beautiful. I've never felt so alive. I've never felt so free. I've never felt so alive. I've never felt so free. This Christian mystery of empathy and solidarity with other human beings and the capacity to empathize with their suffering and living with a sense of transcendence. You know, instead of, you know, fighting like rats in a cage, right? To live with some solidarity, some universalism, right? Some ethics and some transcendence. You know, I don't want to break back into the prison what a lot of people want to do. Take away all my freedom, just feed me. You know, take away all my freedom, but just make sure that my air conditioner works. Just don't want to think about it. Say, no, life only goes in one direction. I found Jesus. Going forward without fear or compromise, and as hard as it is, People, they sneer, some people scorn, 
some people, you know, I can feel the sarcasm. I can feel it. I can feel the caustic remarks, and yet, no turning back. I still like this better. I can't do it. I can't. I can't go back to that. I just can't. I can't do it. It's not the novel. I just can't do it. <laughs> right? The dimensions of my life have been expanded to such a point that I can't go back to it. Right? As much as I'd like to go back to high school and straighten some things out, maybe punch somebody or something, right? I can't do that. Maybe fix a grade that I got in algebra, right? Hey, the dimensions of my life have expanded beyond that. I can't go back to high school. I can't do it. Same thing. I can't go back to the point before I was walking with Jesus. Not gonna happen. This is better. This is better. Heavenly God, we call on you for help as we 
shoulder the crosses we must carry, show us your kindness and mercy as we offer these prayers for all those carrying crosses through Christ our Lord. Join in singing our presentation hymn number 386 in your breaking bread and notes, the servant song number 386.
peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Please join in singing our communion hymn number 654, Loving and Forgiving, number 654.
renewed by this bread from the academic table, we beseech you, Lord, that being food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbors through Christ our Lord. Amen. Are there any announcements? Okay, nothing's going on. Go to your room, close the door, and say a prayer. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Last Sunday, the Lord teach you. Please join in singing our closing hymn, number 382. Lord, you give the great commission, number 382.